Okay, we're back. This is Stanley Poole, the story of the Moors. We're at chapter two, The Wave of Conquest. It goes, O Commander of the Faithful. Okay, we're back. Story of the Moors by Stanley Lane Poole, chapter two, the, Con the Wave of Conquest. Chapter two, The Wave of Conquest. It reads, O commander of the faithful, these are not common conquests. They are like the meaning of the nations on the just of the of the meaning of the <laughs> the meaning of the nations on the day of judgment. Thus wrote Musa, the governor of Africa, to Caliph, well, describing the victory of Guanale. There is Little wonder that the Saracens stood amazed at the completeness of their triumph, leaving the region of myth with which the Spanish chroniclers have surrounded the fall of Roderick, it is a matter of sober, of sober history that the, that the victory of the Guadalete gave all Spain into the hands of the Moors. Tariq and his 1,200 Berbers, see you see how he said 1,200 Berbers now? I mean 12,000 Berbers? I told you, we the Berbers. First they said he had this, we the Berbers. Had by a single action on the whole peninsula, and it needed but ordinary energy, prominence to reduce the feeble resistance which some of the cities still offered. The victor lost no time in following up his success in defiance of an order for Musa, who was bitterly jealous of the unexpected glory which had come to his Berber lieutenant, and commanded him to advance no further. further. The fortunate general pushed on without delay. Dividing his force into three brigades, he spread them over the, con the peninsula and reduced city after city with little difficulty. Mughaf, one of his officers, was dispatched with several 700 horses to seize Cordova. Lying here, lying here till darkness came on, Mughaf stealthily approached the city, a storm of hell which the Muslims regarded as a special favor of providence, muffled the clatter of their horse of their horse's huff. A shepherd pointed out a breach in the walls and here the Moors determined to make the assault. One of them more active than the rest climbed a fig tree. And look, they saying, they saying here the ancestors, they then came into Spain, back into Spain. They getting down. Now they didn't reach the, um, a gate or somewhere and they bought they climbed the fence trying to get in there. So this is show you that, they, that we have never been docile. Okay, so in the, anybody following this, check this out. That's you won't get this in school. Now look at we got it, huh? Only here. You know what that means. The red, black, and green. Okay, let's get back to it. Of a long token to the others. And pulled them up after him. So they climb over now. They instantly surprised the guard and threw upon the gates to the main body of the invaders, and the town was captured with hardly a blow. Boom, ancestors took over the land. The governor garrison took refuge in a covenant, where for three months they were closely beleaguered. When, when at length they, sur they surrendered, Cordova was left in the keeping of the Jews, who had proved themselves such allies of the Muslims in the campaign, who... who Ever afterwards enjoy great and who ever afterwards enjoy great consideration at the hands of the conquerors. Now, Nimba, we are also the Jews, so they say staunch our allies. Think about that. The Moors admitted them into their int intimacy and to very late times never persecuted them as the Gothic priests had done. Huh? Think about that. Wherever arms of the Saracens penetrated, see, you, they got to understand language. See, he's like, say, saying more Saracens, now he's saying Jews. So I'm letting you know, we are the more Saracens and Jews, okay? Wherever the arms of the Saracens penetrated, there were, there shall always find the Jews in close pursuit while the Arab fought, fought, fought the Jews trafficking. And when the fight was over, Jew and more and Persians joined in the culturation of the learning and philosophy, arts, sciences, which preeminently, which preeminently, Distinguish the rule of the Saracens in the Middle Ages. Now you see how he said that. See now, this is why I so point you to learn you know your world history because you will get confused. Now you would think when you hear this that it's all these different groups, but it's not. 
when he said Jews more Saracens, these are all the same people. So you just got to know your history. That's why he said they, they, they doing all this together. And also Persians, we know the ancient Persians were black people, okay? Moors, basically, they're all the same people. With the corroboration of the Jews, or we would say Hebrews, who, and the terror of the Spaniards. Look, is that called the thing called the Spaniards now? Tyreek Conquest preceded a pence. Archidana Arch was occupied without a struggle. The inhabitants had all fled to the hills. Malaga, Malaga surrendered, and Elvira, near where Granada now stands, was stormed. The mountain passes of Mercia was defended by Theodemir for some time with great valor and prudence. But at last, being over persuaded into offering a pitch battle on the plain, Christian, the Christian army was cut into pieces. Dio Demir escaped with a single page to the city of Orihula. There he practiced an ingenious deception upon his pursuers. So just put it in context, man, we didn't, when they say Christian army, they talking about the Europeans, right? So they're like, hey, we didn't came there. And this one, see, they won't tell you this in the United States. So we, it came, we came there, we cut them into pieces. They on the run. And one, this guy, he has a pursuit. He said he left, having any man left in the city for the youth of Mercia had fallen in the field, he made the women put on male attire and arm themselves with helmets and long rods with, like lances, and bring their hair over their chins as if they wore beards. Now, you see what I'm saying? Like, this is like, they taking over. So you gotta, so don't nobody ever tell you that, uh, <laughs> you ain't get it down. Then he lined the rampart with this strange garrison, and when the enemy approached in the shades of evening, they were disheartened to see the wall so well defended. Dio the Mir then took a flag of truce in his hand and put a herald's tabar on his page, and they two sallied forth to the to cap, capitulate and were graciously received by the Muslims general. So there you go. Let's get these words together. So his page, I would say that's his horse. His if he put a herald tabard on his page, he put his like his family picture or his crest on his horse. And then they sallied, he on the saddle, for to capitulate, you know, to, you know, give a, a similar I mean, They were graciously received by us, the Moors, the Moor, the Moors general, who did not recognize the prince. I come, said the, the Moor, on behalf of the city to treat for terms worthy of your magnanimity, and of his and of his dignity, you receive that the city is capable. <laughs> Woo. This no, it's just funny to me because you know they don't want they don't show you this in school, but now now you're in my school, so now you going now you being showed this at school. Okay, I come on behalf of the commander of the city to treat for terms worthy of your magnanimity and dignity. You know, he's basically saying you royalty. You receive, you perceive that the city is capable of withstanding a long siege, but he is desirous of sparing the lives of his soldiers. Promise that the, that the inhabitants shall be at liberty to depart unmolested with their property, and the city will be delivered upon to you tomorrow morning without a blow. Otherwise, we are prepared to fight until not a man be left. The articles of, cap of cap capitulation, cap Capitulation, capitulation, you know what I mean. Were then drawn out, <laughs> and when the Moor had affixed his seal, the Moor took the pen and wrote his signature. Beholding me, he, the governor of the city, at the dawn of the day, gates were drawn open, and the Muslims looked to see a great force issuing forth, but beheld merely Theodemir, the mayor, and his page in battle armor, 
followed by a multitude of old men, women, and children. Where are your soldiers? Ask the more. So how, you see how they're saying that, right? We. So you got this. Got to be a movie now. The story of the Moors. Let's get it together. Look, they tell you what's happening. That I saw a lining the walls. That I saw lining the walls last night. Soldiers, I have I have I none. Said Thea the mayor. As to my garrison, behold it before you. With these women did I man my walls and my pages, my herald guard and my retinue. So struck was the Moors general with the boldness and and you and you need, ingenuity of the trick which had been played upon him that he made Theothamir governor of the province of Mercia which had ever uh, which had which was ever afterwards known in Arabic as Theothamir's land even in the early days the Moors knew and practiced principle of true chivalry they had already won the title to the knightless which so many countries lay compelled to the victorious Spaniards Address them as the Knights of Granada, gentlemen, I be at Moors, Cabaleros, Granadinos, and Cumoros, Hadros de Aco. Meanwhile, Tariq had pressed on to Toledo. So well, let's go back to that when they say chivalry. He's basically saying like, we were just like so cool, so honorary. You know, something that we don't get nowadays in, you know, these colonial times, but he tell you like, even in conquering, we were still giving. You know what I'm saying? Uh, meanwhile, Tariq had pressed on to the leader of the capital of the Goths. He was seeking for the Gothic nobles at Cordova. He had looked to them, but they had fled. At Toledo, which the Jews had delivered into his hands, the nobles were not to be found. They had fled further and taken refuge in the mountains of Austria. Traders like the family of Wittesca and Count Julian alone a, a remain. Hmm. And those were rewarded with posts of government. Hmm. See how they, they put this? How you can this is, listen? Now he's telling you this is how they create. Oh, we we conquered, and then those who have conquered, we put they put them in government. Now you peep that, right? Hey, you help. Okay, you gonna help rule here. So that's what this United States is. The rest of the nobility had disappeared. The country was abandoned to the Moors. Spain had become, in fact, a province of the vast empire of the Arab Caliphs. So if it belonged to the Moors and it's a vast empire of the Arab Caliphs, then, then you know those are the same people. we we'll show you once again that we come from another a global, and you see, say vast, it's a, a vast global empire, man. So I just I'm glad he said that and we he touched on that. Let's continue. So what we got here, this is like one of the castles we took over. He described look, this is stuff we had all control of. I want you to see that. Who held court from Damascus? Who held their court at Damascus and swayed an empire that stretched from the mountains of India to the pillars of Hercules. Whew. Come on now. I just want to go back to that. Till the rest of the nobility had disappeared, and the country was a bit to Spain, <laughs> had become empire, who held their court at Damascus and swayed the empire that stretched from the mountains of India to the pillars of Hercules. Let's keep a note there. What remained to be done towards the pacification of Spain was affected by Musa, who then heard of Tyreek's continued career of success and sailed into the haste and set in all haste across the straits, followed by his Arabs to take his full share of the glory. He crossed in the summer of 712 with 18,000 men, and after reducing Cormenia, Seville, and <laughs> so now they, they like, let's go get it. What? He did what? No, we got to go get the red. What? This, you know, and we do this. This is what I'm talking about. Eighteen thousand go take over land, not just silly game banging. Comodinia, Seville, Merida, Merida, almost like America, joined Tyrica at Toledo. The meeting between the conqueror and his superior officer was not friendly. 
Tariqa went forth to receive the governor of the West with all honor, but Musa struck him with a whip and over, overwhelmed him with reprimands for exceeding his instructions and declaring that it was impossible to entrust the safety of Muslims to such rash and, 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 pious, and pious leading threw him to prison. When this act of jealous tyranny came to the ears of the Caliph well, he summoned Musa to Damascus and restored Tariq to his command in Spain. See, he's like, hey, man, that shit, he's like, hey, that's phony, dog. Don't do that to him. He did all that. You gonna throw him in jail? Faking it? Man, get him out of there, man. You bogus for that, Musa Hayden. Before returning to Syria, Musa had stood upon the Pyrenees. Now, you know, go study Napoleon in the Pyrenees. That's Africa. And had seen a vision of a of European conquest. His recall interrupted his far, his further advance, but soon, but others soon pushed forward. An Arab governor, as early as 1719, occupied the south part of Gaul and called Septimania with the cities of, that sounds like September Sivers, the cities of Carson and Narbonne. And from these centuries, he began to make raids upon Burgundy and Aquitanina, Eudes, Duke, Aquitan. Duke of Antoine Canidia and administered a total defeat to the Saracens under the walls of Tolis in 1721. So he's telling you, man, we've been kicking butt now. But he lost my lost to the Saracens. But his only diverted but this only diverted their course more to the west. They sacked Boeing. As that the tribute from Zin seized <laughs> Abigantan in 1730 and made numerous raids upon neighboring districts, the new governor of Nîmes, um, Abdel Rahman, resolved upon conquest of all Gaul. He had already checked the operation of use and presumed after his victory at Toulouse to carry the war into the Saracens' country and not attack Terraconos and boldly invaded. And Quentin and defeated youth on the banks of Garan and Cactus Bordox by assault in a 1732 march on in triumph towards Tours, where he had heard of the treasures of the Albi of St. Martin between the Potters and Tours. He was met by Charles, the son of Pippin the Heristal, then virtual king of France, for the feeble Merivergon sovereign, Lothair had no voice to oppose the will of his powerful mayor of the palace. The Saracens were, joyf were joyfully to the fight. They expected a second field of Guadalajara and looked to see fair friends their prey from Catalyst and Marisol. An issue Mamatonus an issue Momentus for Europe was to be decided and conflict that ensued was Riley has rightly been numbered among fifteen decisive, decisive among the fifteen decisive battles of the world. He said issue my, my he's telling the issue is so important that if they lose this battle, the history of Europe is gonna change. The question is to be judged by force of arms was whether Europe was to be Christian or Muslim or Mohammedan, whether the future of Notre Dame was to be a church or a mosque. Perhaps either where the St. Paul, when it came to be built, should echo the chant of Agnes D or Mother Prayers of Islam. Had not the Saracens been checked at tours, there is no reason to suppose that they would have stopped at the English Channel. But at the fate of the creed, the tie of the Mohammedans and vision had reached its limit. And Ed was about to set in. Charles and his Franks were no emasculate race like the Romanized Spaniards and Gauls. They were at least as hardy and valorous as the Moors themselves. <laughs> Look, he tell you. And their magnificent stature gave them an advantage which could not fail to tell. Six days were spent in partial engagement, and then on the seventh came a general melody. Charles cut through the ranks of the Muslim with irresistible might, dealing right and left. Such ponderous blows that from that from that from that day he was called Charles Martel, Carl of the Hammer. His Frankish followers, inspired by their leadership powers, bore down upon the on the Saracens with crushing force, and the whole army of the Muslims broke and fled in utter rout. The spot 
long and shuddering known as An known as An An Andalusia by the name of the payment of martyrs. <laughs> so hey, that's the battle we didn't really get that day. But I always say, I always never uh, Saint Maurice and how he was the patron saint of Europe. That's he was the, the, the greatest knight. So we lost that battle. The danger in the Western Europe was averted. So crushing was the disaster that the Moors of Spain never again, through all the centuries that they ruled in the South, attempted to evade Spain. So we never went back to Spain. I mean, I mean, attempted to evade France. But right now, who's already in France, okay? We're still in France. They retain and they retain indeed their whole of Narbonne and district upon the northern slopes of the Pyrenees for some time longer until 7, 797 and even venture upon frame raising into province. But here their ambition ceased. The Battle of Tours had once for all vindicated the independence of France and set a bound to the Muslim conquest. Like the swelling tides of the sea, the Saracen hordes had poured over the land, and now through the hammerers of the Frank a voice had spoken herein to, Thou shalt come, and no further, and here shall thy ways be stayed. On, other, on the other hand, the kings of France were so deeply impressed by the color by the courage of their Muslim neighbors that they too delighted in occasional forays. Once only did they attempt the subjugation of the Spain, Charlemagne the Second Alexander. So what he's saying is, man, we hit them so hard, they they like, hey, these my man, if you want to talk about warriors, these guys are warriors. Like even though we defeated them, you talking about what they take all of that? And we don't want to stop them. Whoa, they got, but that's what I'm trying to tell people today. That's how you got to think. Like, he like, hey, man, they came through. They Once they hit it, they, they kept it. That was their land. And once the Franks realized what really happened, they like, well, we, thought, we thought we kicked butt, but dang, they hit it. They took all that. We don't want to really step to them. Yeah, we happy, but whoa, these guys got to be the truth. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah. let's see what we got. Okay. So let's let's continue. We almost done. Could not contemplate with composure the immunity of the Muslim power on the other side of the Pyrenees. As a good Christian, he pledged to exasperate the infidels as an imperial conqueror in the existence of the independent. as the independent king of Andalusia was safer to his pride. His opportunity came at last when the secession of the first Spanish prince of the Umayyad stock roused the hostility of some factions which were always prone to revolt into Spain. Charlemagne was invited to interfere and drive out the usurper. The Spanish chronicle make Alfonso king of Australia and here of Pelig Peligis summoned the Frankish emperor to his aid, but there was more reason to believe that the invitation came from certain disappointed Muslim chiefs who could not broke the authority of Adir Rahman the Amiyad, and who were ready to submit even to the sworn enemy of Islam rather than recognize the new ruler. The moment of their appeal was Propitious. Charlemagne had just completed, as he thought, the sub subjugation of the Saxons. Their chief, Winnikind, had been banished, and thousands of his followers were coming to Paderborn to be baptized. The conqueror's hand was thus to be free to turn to other schemes of victory. It was arranged that he should invade Spain, while the factious Muslim chief should make diversion in his favor at three different points. Fortunately for the newly founded dynasty of Cordova, this formula co co coalition came to naught. So what he's saying is like, it was some of us that wanted to help Charlemagne invade because we were kind of upset with each other, but it was some things that still brought us together and then didn't, didn't allow him to come invade us and we held on. The allies of Spain miscalculated their time and fell to blows with one another. And when Charlemagne crossed the Pyrenees in 777, he found himself unsupported. He began the siege of Zaragoza when the news was brought to him that Wicked Khan had returned, 
had returned and raised the Saxons who wore, who wore again in arms and had advanced as far as Cologne. There was nothing for it but to hurry back and defend his dominion. So what they saying, when he shot the attack, he had to go back and get back his land because his enemy had rose back up, the, the Saxons. He rapidly re retraced his steps and the main part of his army had already crossed the mountains when he when disaster overtook the rear of pass of Roncon Valleys. The Basque who nourished the Norse and eternal hatred against the Franks had laid a skillful ambuscade among the rocky defiles of Pyrenees and allowing the advanced part of the army to march through way to the rear guard. So as you see, now you hear nobody's been called white yet, right? So let's remember that. Now you don't know white or black yet. And combat with baggage began to slowly thread its way through the pass. Then they fell upon its hips, thigh, so that a scarcely so that a scarcely a frank escape. The Christian columns could tell terrible tales of the slaughter done that day. According to them, it was the Saracen, side by side with the Knights of Leon, who broke havoc on King Charles. <laughs> so he said, whoa, now look, he's saying that that we I, that we came back and we it seemed like we got a little bit of revenge on King Charles. We read in an old Spanish ballad how the legendary hero Bernardo de Capro led the cavalry of Leon to the massacre of, of the Frankish hosts. With 3,000 men of Leon from the city of Bernard goes to protect the soil of Hispania from the spirit of Frankish foes. From the city which is planted in the midst between the seas to preserve the name and glory of old Pelo's victories. Free we were born till thus thy cry through our king. We owe the homage and fealty behind his crest to go. Behind God's hiss our aid he shares what God did in that command that we shall leave our children here in an enslaved land. Woo, we hear this stuff? Our breasts are not timorous, nor our arms so weak, nor our veins flat fifty bloodies that our own vow shall break. To sell our freedom for the fear of Prince and Paladin, at least we sell our birthright dead. No blood is prized, they'll win. At least, King Charles of God decrees he must be Lord of Spain, shall witness that the Leonists were not aroused in vain. He shall bear witness that we die as lived our sires of old, no, not, nor only of Newmanton. New Mantian pride shall minstrels tell be told. Listen to these words, man. Minstrels, Numantins, the lion that have bathed his paw in the sea of liberty and gore, shall he not battle for the laws of liberties of yore? The Nordic cravens may give gold to whom it likes them well, but steadfast heart and spirit Alfonso shall quell. Side by side with Daughty the warriors is Lord of Leon, who thus refused to join the Prince of Australia's in his homage to Charlemagne, or according to the Romans, a host of valiant Saracens, who joined in the onset upon the retiring of Franks. Pseudo Turpin's legendary history of Charles and Orlando took a fresh body of 30,000 Saracens who now poured furiously down upon the Christians, already faint and exhausted with fighting so long, and smote them from high to low so that so that scarcely one escaped. Some were transpierced with laces, some killed with clubs, others beheaded, burnt, flayed, alive, or suspended on trees. The massacre was horrible, and the men of that day never faded from the imaginary of the peasantry of the district. When the English army persuaded Napoleon's marshal through the past of Rick of Vin, the soldiers heard the people singing the old ballad of the fatal field and the Spanish minstrels have recorded many incidents, true or false, of the fight. One of the most famous is the Battle of the Admiral Garanos, whose, which Don Corsico and Sancho Perez Paza heard a song at Tabasso according to the voracious history of St. Ventus. Now, isn't this stuff getting very interesting? Because 
you know, it just shows you, like, when they act like, oh, you've been docile, civil rights, listen, man, you see how you have slaughtered these people in, in battles? Now, let's continue. It's getting juicy, right? The battle of Ron Savalas, Ron Savalas was a dismal day for you, ye man of France, for there the lance of King Charles was broken too. Man, I'm really going to think about, like, um, definitely recording some of this stuff and putting beats behind it just for the future. Just to give you a feel of it. And two, we, we will... I'm back. I know you're loving it. Okay, let's start from the top of the page so you know where we at. It says, the day of Ron's Velas was a dismal day for you, ye man of France, for there the lance of King Charles broke in two. We, may, we well may curse the rueful field for many a noble peer, and fray a fight the dust did by beneath Barno's, Barnado's spear. Their capture was Garano's king of Charles Admiral, King Charles Admiral. Seven Moors came surrounding him and seized him for their thrall. And the ballad <laughs> goes on to tell the tale of Garano's captivity and of his revenge at the tourney when he slew his captain and rode free from France. Among the slain that day was Roland, the redoubtable pa Palestine, Paladin, commander of the frontier Brittany. He is the Sir Lancelot of the Charlemagne romance, and many are doubly deeds recorded of him. He fought all day in the thickets of the fray, daily dealing blows to his good sword Deronda, but all his prowess could not save the day. So wounded to death and surrounded by the bodies of his friends, he stretched himself on the ground and prepared to yap up his soul. But he threw his faithful sword when he then which he would sooner have spared the arm than wealth is saying, O Lord, of unparalleled brightness, excellent dimensions, admirable temper, and halt of the whitest ivory, decorated with a splendid cross of gold, toppled with a berry lined apple engraved with the sacred name of God, endued with keenness and every other virtue. Who now shall wield thee in battle? Who shall call thee master? He that possessed thee was never conquered, never doubted by the flow, daunted by the flow. Phantoms never appalled him, aided by the Almighty. With thee did he destroy the Saracen, exalt the faith of Christ, and win the, the, uh, win the compliment. So he came back and he had avenge, and they saying he got us. But let's keep it going. Come, opposite glory. O happy sword, need, keenness of the king never was like thee. He that made thee made not thy fellow, not one escape from life from stroke, and lest the render should fall into the hands of a crave or infidel. Roland smote it upon a block of stone and broke it in twin. Then he blew his horn, which was so resonant that all other horns were split by its sound, and he blew it with his all might to the veins of his fleck burst and the blast of that dread horn. On Fatsa Byron, echoes born reached even to King's chariot as he lay encamped, ignorant of the disaster that had befallen the rear guard eight miles away. The king would have hastened to answer the forlorn blast that seemed to fail to have a tragedy, but a traitor told him that Roland was gone a hunting, and Charlemagne was persuaded not to answer the summon of his faithful paladin, who, after prayer and confession, gave up the ghost. Then Baldwin. Another appearance of France came running to the king and told him what had befallen the rear of his army and the death of Roland and Oliver. Whereupon the king and his army turned and marched back to Ronceville, where the ground was strewn with the dead, and Charles himself was the first to cry the body of the hero laying in the form of a cross with his body and horn tore beside him. Then the great Charles lamented over him with bearded sides and sobs, wring his hand and tearing his beard and crying, O oh, right arm of thy sovereign body, honor of the Frank, sword of justice, and flexible spirit, inviolable best play, shake, shield of safety, noble defender of Christian, scourge of the Saracens, a wall to the clergy, the widow and orphan friend, just and faithful in judgment. He said he scourge to us. Renowned the Count of the Franks, violent captain of our arms. Why did I leave thee here and to perish? He said he felt he let that man out there by himself. How can I behold thee dead and not die with thee?
So he hurt. He like, man, so we came back and we shit, we got at him. She my line, we got we got at him. So you see, we've been warned with them for a while. This is what they're not telling you. That they don't want you to really know. They want you to think that, oh, it was a slave ship and that we just been docile. Yeah, it was a slave ship, but we're gonna get into that in later books about everything. Okay. Why hast thou left me in sorrow alone, a poor miserable king? But thou art exalted to the kingdom of heaven, and do enjoy the company of angels and martyrs. Thus did Charles mourn for Roland to the last day of his life. On the spot where he died, the army rested, and the body was embalmed with balsam, aloes, myrrh, and the whole army of Franks watched by it that night, honoring the course of hymns and songs, and lighting the fires on the mountains round about. Then they took him with thee and bore him right royally, thus ended the fatal day. When Roland brave and Olero and every plant and pure on Roosevelt died, no action of small importance has ever been made the theme of so many heroic legends and songs. It is thermal ply of the Pyrenees with none of the glory of the significance but the glamour of this prototype. And that ends.